Okay, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the HTTP protocol, and that's pretty much what the whole entire web runs on, so fairly important to know when we're doing web pen testing. So the HTTP or the HTTPS protocol uh, is simply stands for Hypertext Transmission Protocol. So the entire web runs on the HTTP protocol, as I just said. Uh, there are two versions of the HTTP protocol in reality. One is the standard HTTP, and the second is the HTTPS. The only difference between the two is simply HTTPS uses SSL or Secure Socket Layer or TLS, which is a newer style, uh, Transport Layer Security, which provides an encrypted channel to secure your connection to the server. Uh, this is really helpful to prevent any kind of eavesdropping or man-in-the-middle attacks, uh, although it's not always as successful as it would like to be. So let's talk about the overview of the HTTP protocol. Whenever you browse to a website, you are using the HTTP protocol. For URLs that begin with the HTTP uh, colon forward slash forward slash, you are communicating on port 80. For URLs that begin with the HTTPS, you are communicating on port 443, where natively the TLS or SSL runs from. So let's say, for instance, you want to go out to example.com. So when you open your browser and type in the URL, you're requesting data from the host at example.com. Uh, that's actually called a GET request, part of the HTTP protocol and packet. The server then sends a response with a response code, and if all goes well, you'll be presented with the contents of example.com. So let's just take a brief look at uh, a simple HTTP request and a response. So as you can see here, this is a pretty standard request. Uh, it is a GET request, and by a GET request here, we're going to go over these methods in just a few minutes. Uh, by, by the GET request here, you're requesting uh, from the host some site.com, uh, you're also telling them a little bit about your browser, so hopefully if somebody's programmed this website to work with all browsers or just one browser in particular better than the others, uh, it can be presented with that information. So it tells you the user agent, which is Mozilla, Ubuntu, Linux, that's what I'm on right now, uh, and a version of Firefox, of course. And then it gives you a bunch of other options here. We're not going to step through every single one of these. We'll get to that when we're doing some examples. Uh, but you can also see here something fairly important where it says cookie, and that's used for session control. Uh, of course, when you're trying to communicate to a server uh, or a website, sometimes they'll set a cookie for caching purposes or what have you. Uh, so here we're going to say connection closed because we're done making our request. And then looking at the response from the server, this is what it sends back to us after we've made a successful request. Uh, it does HTTP version 1.1 and the status code, which we'll get into here also, of 200, which means OK. Uh, it also gives you some date and time information. Uh, it will give you some content encoding and content length and so on and so forth. Uh, it'll also give up some pretty good information that we're interested in, uh, specifically here on the server line where it says Apache 1.3.3.7 Unix. And then it'll also sometimes give you the guest version of Linux or Unix that's running. In this case, it says it's Red Hat Linux. Uh, E-tags are also uh, generated to see if this site has been visited before to pull from cache so it's not trying to load all the images and stuff again. And then, of course, uh, it'll close the connection and it'll give you all the contents of that page that you're actually requesting. So in our case here, we were just requesting the main page from somesite.com, which is generally index.html or index.php or what have you. Uh, and then inside there, it'll actually read the source code and display that to us in our browser. Now, we never see these codes happening because it's all happening in the background. Uh, but when you use something like Burp Suite as a proxy, you can actually see the raw header data inside the packets that we're sending and receiving from these servers. So uh, pretty important to kind of get a grasp of how this HTTP protocol works with requesting and responding. So let's take a look at some of the HTTP request methods. And as we mentioned before, uh, the get request, the head request, post, put, delete, connect, options, trace, and patch. Uh, usually most of your important ones here are going to be the get um, request and the post request. Uh, if you have servers that have put, delete uh, as available options there, that's probably bad. Um, so if we read the put command here, it says the put method replaces all current representations of the target resource with a request payload. So uh, almost like we can put something there in place of something else. Uh, the delete command, pretty dangerous too, because it says the delete method here um, deletes a specific resource. So you can actually modify the packets to delete something if that's a available method on the server. So take some time and download the PDF that's underneath this video. Study these up here. They're going to be on some quizzes in the final exam. Uh, so make sure you get to be familiar with these here. 
talking about HTTP status codes, right? We've seen that in our response uh, from the server. Um, so here's just a quick list that you guys can study and have on your own. Again, download this PDF and you can have it. Um, so the 200 OK, it's a standard response for successful HTTP requests. Uh, the actual response will depend on the request method used. So for instance, in a GET request, the response will contain an entity corresponding to the requested resource. In a POST request, however, uh, the response will contain an entity describing or containing the result of an action. So make sure you familiarize yourself with the different uh, status codes and the different methods here. So you can see that in a 200 OK, uh, we were talking about the GET request and a POST request, right? So posting is putting some, we're posting something to the server, basically an action. So whenever you uh, log into some sort of website on a login form or something um, or you know you're on a forum and you're posting uh, you know some sort of forum post you're actually posting data to the server for processing so you got some other ones here uh, these are just some of the what there's a bunch of them these are some of the ones that we're going to be uh, specifically working with here uh, 301 move permanently of course this means this and all future requests should be directed to the given uri uh, or url uh, 400 bad requests. I mean, you guys can read through these on your own time here. Uh, 401 unauthorized, uh, that similar to 403 forbidden. Uh, the 403 forbidden, of course, forbidden, of course uh, the request was valid, but the server is refusing the action. So there might be some different things as to why this is happening. Uh, the user may not have necessary permissions for a resource or may need an account of some sort. So uh, if you tried to access a page that required a login uh, and you didn't supply login stuff and you just tried to go directly to that page, you'll probably get a 403 forbidden. A uh, 404 not found, that just means that the website's not found, the page is not found for whatever reason. Um, 500 internal server error, pretty important to us. Uh, generic error message, but uh, it kind of tells us um, that an unexpected condition was encountered, no more specific messages suitable, which means that there's just a big time error on the server. Uh, whether the server is overloaded or the server might be compromised or something to that effect. Maybe it's under a denial of service attack or something to that method. Uh, 503, of course. Um, but again, guys, you know, just take your time and pick through these. Try to learn more about them. Uh, again, there's more status codes and there's, um, you know, a bunch of different ones for different meanings. But, uh, you know, these are particularly important to us. So that wraps it up for this lesson here on the HTTP protocol. And I will see you guys in the next lesson.